everybody, I'm Dr. Cordova Arrington and the Assistant Professor of Flute at the University of Oregon School of Music and Dance. Here are my tips for the flute excerpts. All right, so for the chromatic scale, imagine that you have a tiny leak in a tire. That's what you want to think about when you're expelling the air. Don't release too much all at once or in the upper register, which is totally common. Just fight it, okay? Try to see if you can play a game with how little air you can release. Because the idea when you are a master of the air is that you control how much air, not only how much air you take in, but how much air you release. For the Anderson, what I would recommend is that you think about your pulse being the half note or think about your pulse being the bar. This is going to help you play much more horizontally. And by the way, don't forget to play with lots of fuoco, with lots of fire for this. It's really quite a dramatic piece. So, you know, um, conjure up or evoke your inner diva, so to speak, or devo, and um, have a lot of fun. My last tip is that I would highly recommend that you go to the measure that is most challenging. So that's measure 15. And this is when the harmonic rhythm um, gets to be a little bit faster. So just don't start at the beginning. Start at measure 15, work it out, and maybe work backwards from there. And I think that you'll find that recording this excerpt goes a lot more smoothly. The Brahms, um, this has to be my favorite excerpt of all time. Well, I don't know, maybe Afternoon of the Fawn, but I, I love the Brahms Symphony Number no. 4. Okay, so my biggest tip for this is please listen to the entire symphony. I think sometimes that when we're learning excerpts, we learn them in a vacuum, and you know, our interpretations can sort of sound like that. So you should start asking yourselves, what comes before the solo? What comes after the solo? What's happening during this solo? Because almost, uh, it's very rare that when you are playing a solo, if, unless you're completely by yourself, that you are by yourself. So there's so much to be inspired by. Um, just the opening of this symphony is based off of a, a repeated ostinato passacaglia that happens in the brass, and it's absolutely gorgeous, and it's the basis for, harmonic basis for this entire solo. So make sure you listen to the entire symphony, but especially the entire fourth movement. I would also recommend playing the flute part prior to make sure that you aren't playing the solo too slowly, which is very common. <laughs> Okay, so I think 
one of the most challenging things about this is actually the breathing. So I would just gonna make a recommendation and tell you what I do. So I usually take a breath in um, right after the middle C that's in measure 11. And then I'll usually, after I take that breath and then re-enter on the upper C, then after that, the next measure, which is measure 12, I usually back down the dynamic for a little bit so I can conserve my air, but still playing very, very, very musically. Um, my biggest practice tip for this for articulation and for tonguing is to play this all on hot with air attacks. And I think you'll find that once you make sure that you are articulating not from the tongue that all of your sound isn't coming from your head and that it's coming from your core on air attacks that you'll find that the tonguing is much easier. And lastly, for low register um, clarity, the teeth must be open. There must be lots and lots of space. So maybe experiment with playing the first 16th notes in measure one, starting without a tongue at all, so that there's nothing blocking the airstream. You might find that when you take a breath and you play without the tongue in this first measure, um, that you're already set up to be very much more open than you would if you were to start that A flat with a hard T. but not least piccolo okay the granger which i love i love playing piccolo by the way i think piccolo can really improve our flute playing um, a lot um, because we use very fast air when we play the piccolo but anyway my tip for this excerpt is that pull out okay i can't say it enough pull out a little bit so the reason why i say that is that when you pull out your piccolo it actually helps the upper register sound and speak more easily. So if you're someone that struggles with the upper register, um, think about pulling out. If you're someone that buzzes in the upper register, think about relaxing your lips and opening the aperture a little bit more. Um, I think sometimes we always think with piccolo because we're playing with such fast air that we have to have a very tight embouchure and this is just not the case at all. If anything, stay nice and nice and relaxed. Um, and I think that you'll find that you have an easier time getting those upper pitches to speak. Musically speaking, I think that you can really think about just coasting in the opening until about measure five and then measure six completely erupting. So I think one of the things that I've learned in playing different orchestras is that what people really like about piccolo players is um, a player's ability to play you know, loudly and softly. So it's about control, right? So what I would do is I would try to see if you could sort of take it easy in the opening, think about coasting and gliding, and then absolutely erupt in figures like in measure six. All right, have fun practicing. <laughs>